Earlier this year, Hack the Box released their first certification, the Certified Bug Bounty Hunter, or CBBH for short. It's been a couple of months since I passed this exam, however I wanted to make this video to share my experience with others who might be interested in taking it. In this video I will cover the course, the exam, and some tips I have for passing. So, first off, let's talk about the course. The course is the Bug Bounty Honor Job Rule Path on Hack the Box Academy, which is made up of the following 20 modules. Web Requests, which explains how HTTP works. Introduction to Web Applications, which explains common web application architecture. Using Web Proxies, which teaches students how to use Burp Suit and Zap. Information Gathering Web Edition, which teaches the basics of enumerating. Attacking web applications with FFUF discovers fuzzing attacks with FFUF. JavaScript deobfuscation, cross-site scripting, SQL injection fundamentals, SQL map essentials, command injections, and file upload attacks all cover the attacks of the same name. Uh, Server-side attacks, this includes attacks such as SSRF, SSI, ESI, SSTI, and XSLT attacks. Login brute forcing teaches login brute forcing, of course, but it also teaches how to create personalized word lists. Broken authentication teaches default credential attacks, brute forcing reset tokens, and some other vulnerabilities specifically related to authentication. Web attacks is a module about HTTP verb tampering, IDOR and XXE. File inclusion covers file inclusion attacks. Session security explains session hijacking, CSRF, and open redirect vulnerabilities. Web service and API attacks is a module about file upload attacks, LFI, XSS, SSRF, denial of service, and XXE all via API, so not via some GUI. Hacking WordPress is a module about using WP scan and how you can get code execution once you have access to the dashboard. Bug bounty hunting process is the final module. It's a module about writing a good report. 11 of these 20 modules overlap with Hack the Box's more recent CPTS course, so if you want to take both of these courses, I would keep that in mind. You only have to do it once. One thing to keep in mind is you need to complete 100% of the path and each module within before you're allowed to start the exam. I personally don't agree with this because it means people who have previous experience with web pen testing have to sit through a module teaching them the basics of HTTP, which I think is unnecessary, but I'm just saying that's how it is. I started working through this course on April 1st, 2022, and I ended on April 15th, so in total it took me 15 days. And I want to say I was spending around four hours a day on average, perhaps eight on the weekends. According to Hack the Box, this path should take 18 days. This calculation is based on the assumption of 8 hours a day, which would result in a total of 144 hours. In reality, it may take you more time or less time. It really depends on which previous knowledge you have and how much time you have to dedicate to studying. Throughout the course, there are interactive assignments where you spawn either a Docker container or a VM and then carry out the attack which was taught in the module. You can either use your own machine or VM or you can use Hack the Box's Pwnbox which is a Parrot OS VM that you can access from the browser. Personally, I never used the Pwnbox because I have a perfectly good machine and internet connection to work with, but depending on your current setup, this may be something you want to use. Regarding pricing, Hack the Box Academy uses cubes as their currency and the Bug Bounty Hunter Path costs 1,410 cubes in total. There are various ways you can finance this. If you're a student, the best option is the student subscription, which is seven euros a month, and you get access to all the modules. If you're not a student, and you plan on using your own machine and not the Pwn box, then I would say the best option is to take the Platinum subscription for two months. This will net you 2,000 cubes in total, and uh, cubes don't expire, so this should be enough to cover the course. And if you're not a student and you want to use the Pwn box, then I would say take a look at the various subscriptions and find one which would meet your pace the best. For the exam portion of this certification, you're given seven days to attack multiple websites and then write up a report about all the vulnerabilities that you find. There are 10 flags scattered throughout the exam environment, which add up to a total of 100 points. You need 85 of these points to pass, which could be either 8 or 9 flags, depending which ones you find, as they vary in point value. You can get these flags either by gaining administrative access to the website, or by gaining remote code execution on the underlying server. 
uh, content wise I believe knowledge from every module is tested in this exam nothing really felt left out and many of the attack chains require stringing multiple vulnerabilities together content wise I'm not really sure how much more I can say about this exam so let's move on for this exam you are given seven days to attack the websites write your report and submit it according to mr. Ben this is meant to simulate a typical web app security assessment where you might have five days for the attacking portion and then two more for reporting. He also says it is expected that a few hours a day over the period of seven days should be enough to complete this exam comfortably on time. Personally, it took me a day and a half to earn a passing grade or 85 points, another half a day trying to get the last flag before I gave up, and then another half a day to write up the report and submit it. So in total, two and a half days. It is important to note that I do web application pen tests professionally for my day job, so I already knew most of the content of this course and I was mostly just doing it for fun. In addition to collecting enough flags slash points, you have to write the report, which details the vulnerabilities you found in the websites. I can't show you the report I submitted, but I will show you this heavily censored and truncated version instead. <laughs> so this is my report. So the report I submitted was 21 pages long. This one is 11 because I cut a bunch of it out. Um, a lot of the report is given to you in the template. So this page, this page, this page, this page, this page. First five pages are given to you in the template, right? Next, you have to define the scope of your pen test. So you're going to write down all the IP addresses you found, all the URLs, a short description of the site. Next, you have to put down a quick management summary, which includes the number of vulnerabilities you found and uh, the short names and severity levels. It's either high, medium, or low. Next, for each vulnerability that you find, you have to fill out this sort of box. It includes the CWEID, a CVSS score that you have to calculate, a description of the issue, security impact of the issue, the hosts that were affected, remediation information, so how to fix the issue, and if you have some websites to help uh, explain this vulnerability, then you can include it in external references. In this report, I'm only including two of them. I cut a bunch of them out. There were much more during the exam. At the end of the report, you have this appendix where you have all the flags you found, where they were, and a short description of the method that was used. And that's it. The report really isn't that hard. There isn't that much to it. Like I said, this report took me around half a day to create. Not this one, this is the censored version, but the actual report I submitted, right? If you submit a report, then whoever is grading your exam will leave you feedback, regardless if you pass or fail. If you fail and you have to retake the exam, then keep in mind that you're given the same exam network. The feedback may be just what you needed to pass the exam on your next try. In my case, I passed on the first try. This is the feedback I received from Mr. Ben, who obviously reviewed my exam. In my case, he gave me some pretty solid advice about writing a better report. But this feedback is different for each person, so you may receive something else. Regarding pricing of the exam, you need to buy exam vouchers to attempt the exam. Uh, one such voucher costs 180 euros or 216 if you include value-added tax. This voucher is valid for one attempt plus one retake. The only catch is that if you fail your attempt, you must start the retake within 14 days of receiving the feedback. If you don't start within the two weeks time, or if you fail the retake and you need to take further retakes, then you're going to need to buy further vouchers for 180 each. Finally, I'd like to share a couple of tips I have for the exam. I'll be a little bit vague on some of these as to not give too much away, but otherwise let's get into it. So, first tip, some of these websites in the exam have multiple ways to get in. Uh, some of these ways depend on other websites in the network. If you're feeling stuck on one website, like you don't know where to go, then try another website. Maybe you'll find some information that can help you on the previous one. The second tip is hack the boxes search feature can be very useful during this exam. The course and the exam are written by the same people after all, so you can be sure that the techniques taught in the course are gonna be the same ones used in the exam. Let's say, for example, I'm stuck at a login portal, right? I can look up login root forcing. I can check exactly which techniques are taught in this module. So default passwords, personalized word lists, the Hydra. I would take these techniques 
and try to apply them in the exam and see which ones are fitting for the situation because the same people who wrote this module wrote the exam so it's almost certainly going to be the same sort of attack. My third tip is when you buy an exam voucher you don't have to schedule an exam start time so you can start it whenever you want. I would suggest starting it early on a Saturday morning or at least that's what I did because then you can get full two days work in without really any distractions and hopefully you can complete the majority of the exam in this time. Fourth tip, lastly, uh, this is a tip which applies to almost any certification exam. Take screenshots and write down the attack steps while you're doing the exam, not afterwards, because this will save you a ton of time when you're writing the report. You don't have to recreate all the attacks to get the screenshots. And if you have to reset the exam environment, then it's a lot easier if you have everything written down nicely. So, you've reached the end of my video, thank you for watching, I hope you found it useful. If you'd like to see a similar review to the CPTS exam by Hack the Box, then you can check out my video somewhere up here. And apart from that, consider subscribing, leaving a like, and feel free to write any questions you have down in the comments, I'll try to answer them.